A couple days ago, I was on the Gitter chat room for the AMP PHP library of uh, asynchronous library. And there was a question from somebody, and I wasn't able to answer it right away. A couple days later, I figured out um, his problem. It was pretty complicated, and so I thought we would sort of revisit generators and what are they and maybe how to avoid this problem in the future. Uh, the guy was kind enough to put his code into a GitHub gist, so here it is. And basically, he's setting up this router. This is the uh, Aris um, HTTP library, and so he's connecting his router post to this URL will uh, some sort of rabbit business object post, right? It doesn't really matter what the implementation is. We come over here. This is his rabbit uh, bo. And what he's trying to do is get the entire request body, JSON decode it, uh, do some other stuff, do some other stuff, and the response, right? And uh, this didn't work for him. And one of the key reasons why is that he's saying this returns a promise, an AMP promise. And perhaps this res end and res set status will return a promise, but there's one thing up here that is stopping um, the post object from returning uh, a a promise and to figure out why we got to go back to basically what are generators we need to relearn what's a generator in PHP what's a coroutine all that stuff okay so what is a generator generator is an interruptible function where if you combine it with a uh, asynchronous library it sort of lets you write asynchronous cooperative multitasking code which means a portion of your code can run pause its execution another portion can run it's not preemptive there's not a kernel or a, um, um, a supervisor that can stop and say you only get uh, 10 milliseconds to run now I'm gonna pause you right you have to write your methods to be cooperative with other methods and you have to give up your execution or yield it from time to time and the basics of generators are when sort of when you read the documentation all you really find are how to use them as iterators and how to count and how to count with less memory you can count to a billion without a whole lot of memory right because you're not returning an array that has a billion objects you're just um, you're you're just counting and then you're interrupting the function maybe at this yield and that yield is kind of like a return and it pauses the execution and gives that one integer back um, up the chain and then and then it keeps going and so when you're trying to learn about generators um, you don't find a whole lot of good useful cool multitasking stuff and one of the reasons for that is that generators can't really do it generators are uh, like a small uh, subtask of coroutines and if we go to Wikipedia uh, it's gonna say here's, it's like some pseudo code right I have a queue while the queue is not full do some stuff and what it says is that well okay like generators versus coroutines. A coroutine, uh, a generator can yield. Okay, let me, let me. Coroutines have the ability to control where execution continues after they yield, and generators cannot. Generators transfer control back to the caller. That seems obvious, right? It's like a function. When you're done and you yield, and when you return, you go back up to the caller. When you yield, you go back up to the caller. Uh, but this is primarily why generators are used for writing iterators. The yield statement does not specify a coroutine to jump to. However, it is possible to implement coroutines on top of the generator functionality with the aid of a dispatcher, right? So basically what they're saying is if you have another library, uh, you, can, you can achieve this effect of uh, multitasking, right? With something that should only be really used as iterators, um, you can actually achieve cooperative multitasking. Now, if we go to this article, this is the first article I read on generators. Uh, back in December 2012, it was written. And he starts off, uh, you know, with the simple X range sort of uh, example of 
you know, here's what a yield function does and here's how it can use less memory. Um, and then a little bit of the interrupter stuff, a little bit of the send, whatever. It's a very dense article because he's trying to explain how to be useful with them, but he just jumps right in and basically we're, we're going over the building of this entire library that will help us achieve coroutine functionality with just generators. Um, nowadays, we have AMP and React, which are two libraries that help us do uh, asynchronous programming on top of PHP's generators, right? And this is a good article to read, but it, it's heavy and dense because you're going over the creation of an entire library, an entire coroutine socket, and you can't ease yourself into it, get your feet wet, and try to discover a library. So I recommend starting with React or AMP. And, um, but this is still a good read, uh, although it may be dense. Right, so let's look at a little bit of example code. This is a basic PHP function. Um, when you call example, its, it's uh, code gets put on the execution stack. It gets a clean slate of uh, scope. And when it hits the return value, it sort of passes this value back up to the controlling script, which is this one, main, or global, if you will. And so we have A equals 3. Now, in the generator world, it doesn't, look, doesn't quite work like that. In the, in the um, now in the coroutine world, which PHP doesn't have, it sort of works like this, where uh, you have a main process that has a queue, and we're gonna we're gonna start to uh, produce. And produce is going to say while the queue is not empty, oh, produce while the queue is not empty, create some items, then yield, yield to the consume process, and that's going to get bumped off, and that's going to get held to the side here, right? In the uh, in the uh, in this one, when example is finished, it gets thrown away, right? It goes way over here to the side. It's done. It gets garbage collected, right? It's out of scope, but in the um, coroutine world and the generator world, it, it's not. These execution cycles are saved. Now they don't they don't stack on top of each other either. When I when I yield to produce and then yield back to consume, I don't get infinite recursion like that. They don't stack on top of each other. They actually um, bump each other out. So produce will produce some items, then it will call consume, and consume will uh, remove items, then it will call produce. So this ability to jump to different coroutines is, is not uh, available in PHP, which is why we need the library. We need one of the libraries, either AMP or React, to sit right here and help us um, with sort of the handoff and some other magic abilities where we call produce. Then when this one is done, it'll do this. And then when this one is done, and this is what's going to give us our asynchronous um, ability out of our generators or in, or our uh, iterators. So this this library, along with React, uh, can help us turn our our iterator generators uh, into full blown um, cooperative async multitasking. Right. So let's see how PHP handles a basic generator. I have this function, and it has yield one, yield two. Uh, return three. I don't need that. Let's start this over. All right, let's look at a basic PHP example of uh, generators and how they work. I'm going to run this through my debugger. We have this basic function called example. It says echo, I'm starting, yield one, yield two, I'm finished, and then return three. We step over this. Uh, so when I call example, what what should I get? Should I get one, two, or three? Well, you get neither of those. What happens is you get an object of type generator. And I can call things on this object, rewind, current, next, things that I haven't defined. And this is the crux of the problem. The original problem was that um, the app just didn't work. And it's because yield uh, will 
any function that it's inside of PHP at the at sort of the Zend engine level will change this into a generator object and it won't be a function it won't have a normal return value now this may seem obvious but when you're inside the libraries and you're refactoring what you're copying and pasting pieces of code into different functions this is going to bite you and you're going to have a yield statement somewhere where it's not supposed to be this is key right yield fundamentally changes a function into an object now with this object when i call current it's going to go inside the execution stack and run up to the first yield and give me back that first yield so now my b is one and then I can say while it's valid, while it ha you know while it still has more yields, uh, give me the current which I already have as one. Then do next, and then I'm going to get two, and then I'm going to go next, and it's going to see that it's going to run all the way to the end, and it's not going to be valid because there's no more return. So we're going to fall out of this loop right here, and I'm able to get the return value. It doesn't give it to me um, as part of the loop, right? I just get the return value. And R is now three, you can see that. And this might be a little bit confusing, but what happens is um, you can use, let me close this. So um, you can use the generators as, um, iterators right so here's this for each and I can get rid of all this nonsense about valid current key next right as a for each because it implements the iterator class now the hard thing is remembering all this is going on while you're programming and while you're trying to connect to MySQL and open your sockets and all that stuff right so uh, for each so basically the same thing right here if I step over I get my A is still a generator object. I can call rewind, which will error out if you've encountered any yields. Um, if you haven't, then it does nothing. Nope, not true. Rewind will advance you to the first key, I believe, the first yield. Let's see, do I get? Do I get one? Yes, I get one. So. Yeah, rewind. Oh no, it's because I did current rewind. Never mind. Forget rewind. It's pretty complicated. Uh, read the PHP docs if you want. So I can get one, two. So my val is now two. And the next time, my val will be an array. So you can pass more than just simple objects back, right? My val is array one. Uh, it has a key of nine and a value of foo. So you don't have to yield simple numbers. You can yield anything you want. And uh, we still have this great for each. And uh, we still have the return value. So, um, gen yeah, generators are not functions. So um, generators also have this ability to take in a value so this yield is a two-way street one it pauses execution and acts like a return statement giving control back up to the caller but the caller can when it resumes right instead of calling next i can actually inject a value back into it which is pretty weird but i can say send and i can say send um uh hello from the outside right and if I just run this, I'm starting, I'm finished, message hello from the outside, and then the return value three. Interesting, right? Uh, technically, I'm sending every single time. I'm just ignoring it the first two yields. So uh, let's do a break point here. Then I can run, run. I get into my loop uh, will I ever yeah okay so now we're inside the send message is uninitialized one more step um, who I jumped out jumped out cuz what there was no more anything to do there
All right, let's set another let's set another breakpoint right here. And I'll hit it both times. Sorry, my uh, bugger died. Okay, so step, step, and just run, right? Okay, message is uninitialized if I go. All right, so I'm not a actually able to break inside here. Uh, I don't really fault the debugger for not letting me step. No, maybe I should fault it. I don't know. Maybe I'm not using it right. Um, oh wait. So it's weird. I have it now. Okay. I just said I faulted it. It's working. Um, I'm in this point. Yield one, yield two. Message is yield three. And I have message equaling the value hello from the outside. And we have here send. So everything is working. And I'm able to pass in. So, man, generators, they act as iterators. You could for each over them. You could pause their execution and come back to them later. And you can send values in at the pause time. So now let's go back to our original problem where the... Uh, person in the chat room was trying to set this up as a route and set this post up and immediately we see the yield keyword and anytime PHP this is at the engine level you can't stop it it will anytime you call this post you will get back a generator and it actually won't execute any of the lines right it won't execute any of these lines until you treat it until you either call uh, current, next, send, or you treat it as a for each. So we can see this here. If I come back up here and run, oh, that's not what I want to do. I want to run this. Example. Oh, it died. If I run this, I'm here, and I call my function. We just passed this step right here. I call my function. It hasn't said I'm starting. There's no output here. It's blank because this is a generator and I need to treat it as such, right? So the problem is that when he calls post, it's actually just gonna return a generator object. And so what he needs to do is somehow turn this generator into a promise because he knows that he needs to return a promise to get it to work here. But the tricky part of Coding all this, so I can imagine what happened is he coded all this at the top level and then uh, went to uh, went to sort of refactor it and, and it stopped working. So here is, I'm going to show you this. This is from their examples page, right? It's basically the same thing. So we have a statement, which is yield prepare. We have a result, which is yield statement. And then we have yield result advanced to loop through the records. I'm gonna simplify it a little bit. So we make a pool, we yield a query to get a result set, and then the result set fetch all, and we yield that to get rows. I'm just gonna run this. Uh, MySQL.php, got six rows. Okay, what am I doing? I'm just selecting star from user, not a big deal. Now, if I say var dump, well, yeah, let's just do var dump alt set. Let's see what we got here. So we get this class, which is amp MySQL result set. Now, if I don't yield, what do we get? We get class anonymous, which is a shame that um, it's not a real class in amp PHP. I think they're kind of oddly focused on premature optimization. Um, this should be a promise. We can see that it has resolved false and then it has a, um, on resolved, which is a pointer to a function. And these are uh, trademarks of the promise interface. 
my script errors out because it doesn't have fetch all because it's not a result set, right? So I need yield. Yield is magically changing promises into their resolved values. Does that make sense? So when I put yield in front of something, it changes the promise into its resolved value. And that seems like a cool thing to do in a asynchronous library. The problem comes when you start refactoring uh, the get result count. So this only works when you're one step away from the AMP library, like I was showing you before with the stacks, right? So this AMP loop takes this function and runs it, and it's able to do some magic stuff with the yield. If I simply make a function called get result count, I give it a result set, I paste everything in here and I say return row count. So I've pasted everything exactly the same. You think it's gonna work? No, it's not gonna work. Undefined variable result set. Whoops, that was my bad. I need to do this. Outside, I did too many things, but still copying and pasting. So, uh, catchable fatal error object of class generator cannot be converted to a string. Oh, what does that mean? It means that this function returns a generator, right? It's a PHP function, it has the keyword yield in it. Oh, shoot. You know, why am I not getting the magic? Let me just in a desperate move, try to get the magic of AMP back. And now AMP says uncaught invalid yield error. Um, it was expecting a promise or a promise interface to yield. So this yield is only magic when the right hand side is a promise. And you're, you know, and what you're yielding to the next level up is part of the AMP framework because it has special magic functions to say, ah, when you yielded to me, is it a promise? If so, I will sort of wait until it's resolved and I'll keep track of it. And then when it's resolved, I will inject the value back into here as with the send, right? So it's doing all this cool magic. The problem is it doesn't work when you start refactoring unless you're one step away from the library. So how do we get around that? There's got to be a way around that, right? Please, please tell me there's a way around it. There's one way around it, and it's the AMP call. And what this does is you give it any sort of callable. Right now it's the name of this function because it's just a function, I'm not fancy OOP, and then you pass it as variables. You still have to yield it, right? But what this does is this will wrap a generator into a promise. If we come back here, Aha, got six rows. That's what we started with, right? So everything's working now. So to go back to the original problem is you, you know, if, if we don't understand the yield function from, from the PHP level up, and we're sort of only um, dealing with the AMP examples, AMP does so much work to help yield be so cool in a asynchronous environment. But the core PHP is still going to make you have a generator, make you have an iterable, help you do array counting. And so we have to be careful when we're refactoring and moving stuff away from the AMP library into other functions, other objects. And we really have to understand, is this object going to be um, asynchronous? Is it gonna deal with asynchronous stuff inside of it that needs to be yielded, right? Because I can't, if I'm just in this function, I can't really deal with a result set. Um, I can't wait for rows as a promise. I can't say like rows arrow, like please finish now. You can't do that. There is um, amp wait and you can pass it a promise. Uh, but for some reason, I don't know if they're trying to be mean to you or what, this will end your loop. As soon as this promise is resolved, it exits the entire program. It's just like loop done. I don't know why. It's mainly for 
Um, if you have a synchronous set of code and you're trying to run a little bit of asynchronous library and you don't have a way to wait, um, you can use this. But really, if if you are doing asynchronous, the whole thing needs to be asynchronous up and down the chain and you need to make sure that whatever whenever you have a promise it can yield all the way back up to the loop run so the loop run can resolve it you need to have this like chain of yields all the way down so i hope this has given you some good insight into php generators and coroutines and sort of the amp library maybe a little bit of the react library and how you can uh, use them how not to get caught up in them and let me know if you've made anything in one of the, in one of these libraries have you made a uh, asynchronous program of any sort, let me know in the comments. And I'll uh, see you next time.